Hey guys, so I have a Express server right here running in Node.js and I have some secrets right here. I have my username and password for my database and I don't want to put these in my actual application because if I want to put this code on GitHub or out in the world, I don't want everyone to have my username, my password. So how do I share this code without revealing what my username, my password is? And that sort of thing. How do you basically take these out or hide it? Um, is what I'm going to be talking about. And the best way to do this is with environment variables. Now, if you've seen me before, what you can do is just do come into terminal and export an environment variable. Like I could just say um, user is equal to Bob, and then that is made. So if I were to echo user, I see Bob show up, right? And I can actually use that in Node. Um, so that's what we're going to do, but you don't want to have to come over here and export all your environment variables every single time that you want to, you know, set up your project, right, and start running it. So there is a package called dot m that helps with this. Uh, it's a nice module. It's really small, um, super simple. So I'm going to show you how you can put your secrets, um, in a dot. So how this works is you put it in what's called a dot in file. It talks about here. Um, and then the file will look like this. So whatever you want it to be called um, here. So this is the key. This is the value. And then this key here is what you reference in your node application. So when they do process.env, it'll look it up in your dot in file and grab it and just put localhost here. It'll put that value. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to create a new file called dot in and now it's, this is very important. Um, when you create a new file called .env, make sure you go to your .gitignore and do .env because you don't want um, this to be shared because this is going to have all your secrets in it. So for example, I'm in my index folder here. This is where my secrets are. So I would like to do process. Dot, and what was it? Process.env. This is how you get your, I can just copy that. That's how you get your environment variable, putting in the name. So I'm going to say db name is going to be this one. So then I'm going to grab it, what its value is, and then come over here and say db underscore name is equal to that value. Oops. And I'm going to do the same thing for this guy. It's going to be process.env.db username. And we're going to delete it, put it over here db username. Oops. There you go. So and I'm, you can do this for as many variables as you want. I'm just going to do it for these three. So now I have my db username and db password. Not everyone in the world can come see it, right? So I'm a little bit protected. So db underscore password. And now you can share your code and have it all, this is so this is what everyone else is going to see db username db password if someone wants to use your code on the internet then what they do is they create their own dot m file putting in whatever they want their values to be now let's see this in action um, we create our dot m file we actually need to we have you know we're reading from them we actually need to set up the dot m uh, module so we're going to import .m from .m and then just call, you want to do this at the very top, .m .config. And then we're going to, we're going to go ahead and do download this library for uh, this project. So yarn add .m. And it's important to call config as soon as possible because if any of these other things use, use you know, the environment variable, then it can get messed up. So you, you like placing it here is actually a mistake. And here's why. Notice how I am importing modules here. Well, my modules, if we see what's happening in modules, I can come to modules, we're importing this index file. And in this index file, I'm actually accessing these environment variables. So if I did it like this, they would be null. So like, cool, everything's set up. If I did npm start, I think it's gonna crash. 
um, unless I have those environment variables for some reason. Nope, okay, cool. So roll bob does not exist. Oh, I guess when I put the user as bob, that's actually an environment variable that SQLize uses. So uh, if you need to get rid of environment variables, so you see how I did, uh, I had bob set to user, you can unset that like this. And now if I were to echo user, oh, just kidding. I think I have to get rid of that, maybe. There we go, and now echo is, this is, it unsets that variable. Okay, so let's do npm start again. Uh, we shouldn't see Bob here. Okay, here we go, so no SQLite usernames specified and start a packet. So it basically doesn't know what to do, right? Because it doesn't have the right things. That's because we called config in the wrong place. So make sure you're doing config at the very top. Um, it does not gonna like it, right? My ESLint, because it's like, you should be importing before you're doing any kind of configuration, but. It's just gonna have to deal with it. So I'll get rid of this, restart the server, and now we should be reading our .in files. And bam, it does not work. Let's... Okay guys, so I went ahead and looked at my process.env, didn't end up having anything helpful, but we did everything correctly. Something was just wrong with my terminal window or whatever, I just opened a new one and now it works fine. So if I echo on dollar sign db name it doesn't exist but if I do npm start it will now go ahead and read the dot env file here getting the db name incorrectly working so this is how you should do it if it this happens to you where it just does not work for some reason some kind of weird setting is wrong in your terminal just go ahead and open it up again and it should work for you so dot env, import it, call config, and then afterwards process dot env, and then put all your keys in dot env. That is the correct way of doing it. So you're good to go. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, code will be up on GitHub.